In this lesson, we're going to focus on solving practice problems where we need to rationalize the numerator. So let's go ahead and work on this fraction. We have 3 minus the square root of 5 over 4. In order to rationalize the numerator, we need to multiply both the top and the bottom of the fraction by the conjugate of the numerator. The conjugate is everything that you see here but with the opposite sign. So instead of 3 minus the square root of 5, it's going to be 3 plus the square root of 5. So that's the conjugate of the numerator. Now whatever you do to the top, you must also do to the bottom. So we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom of this fraction by the conjugate. So let's go ahead and FOIL the two numerators of the fractions. So we have 3 times 3, which is 9 and then 3 times the square root of 5, so that's plus 3 root 5, and then negative square root 5 times 3, so that's minus 3 root 5. Negative square root 5 times square root 5, let's write that here. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5, well 5 times 5 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5, so we get minus 5. Now, we could distribute the 4 to the square root to 3 plus the square root of 5, but I'm going to leave it like this at this point. Because with these problems, sometimes you can cancel something that's on the bottom. So now let's simplify the numerator of the fraction that we have in the upper right corner. Positive 3 root 5 and negative 3 root 5, they're going to cancel. They add up to 0. And so we're left with 9 minus 5, which is positive 4. So we have a 4 on top and a 4 on the bottom. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So this is going to be the final answer. It's 1 over 3 plus the square root of 5. So the original expression is equivalent to this expression here. Now let's work on another problem. It looks a little bit more complicated, but the process that we need to follow is still the same. So let's multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by the conjugate of the numerator. So the conjugate is going to be exactly everything we see except the sign that separates the two terms, which is going to flip it. So since it's a negative sign, we're going to change it and make it positive. So now let's FOIL. The square root of x plus 2 times itself, the square roots will cancel, and we're just going to get x plus 2. Next, we have the square root of x plus 2 times 3. So that's going to be 3 root x plus 2. And then if we pair those two together, it's going to be negative 3 root x plus 2. And then negative 3 times 3, that's going to be negative 9. Now, just like before, we're just going to write these two terms, or rather these two factors together. We're not going to FOIL what's on the bottom, since they're not conjugates of each other. So I'm just going to rewrite it here. Just like before, the two middle terms, positive 3 and negative 3, they're going to cancel. They will add up to 0. So now what we have left over is x plus 2 minus 9. Positive 2 minus 9 is negative 7. So we're left with x and then minus 7 on the numerator. On the bottom, we have this factor, x minus 7 times what we see here.
x minus 7 divided by itself is 1, which means our final answer is 1 over the square root of x plus 2 plus 3. And so now you know how to rationalize the numerator of a fraction that contains radicals. Now, here's a harder problem. Go ahead and rationalize both the numerator and the denominator. Well, let's begin with the numerator. So we're going to multiply the entire fraction by the conjugate of the numerator. So the conjugate of the numerator is everything that we see here. We're just going to replace the positive sign with a negative sign. So it's going to be the square root of 7 plus x minus 4. And then I'm going to rewrite that for uh, the bottom part of the fraction. So let's go ahead and FOIL uh, what we have on a numerator. So the square root of 7 plus x times the square root of 7 plus x, that's just going to be 7 plus x. Now we know that this term will cancel with this term. Positive 4 root 7 plus x, when you add that with negative 4 root 7 plus x, they're going to cancel and add up to 0. Now, 4 times negative 4, that's going to be negative 16. So this is what we now have. On the bottom, I'm just going to rewrite what we have here. Let's start with this. Square root 7 plus x minus 4, and then times the square root, actually, times 3 minus root x. Now, let's simplify this fraction. So what we have here is positive 7 and negative 16. 7 minus 16 is negative 9. So we have x minus 9. On the bottom, we have the square root of 7 plus x minus 4 times the other factor. So now that we've rationalized the numerator, let's do the same for the denominator. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by this conjugate, which was here before. So the conjugate of 3 minus the square root of x, that's going to be 3 plus the square root of x. Now, what we have on top, I'm not going to FOIL that. I'm just going to leave it the way it is for now. The only factors that I'm going to FOIL are the conjugates, the factors that are conjugates of each other. So that would be just those two. OK, so now we have 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 times root x and negative 3 times root x. Those two are going to cancel, as always. And then finally, we have negative root x times root x. So negative root x times root x, that's just going to be negative x. The square roots will cancel. So we can write this as 9 minus x. Now notice that these two factors, they appear very similar, but they're not exactly the same. We have x minus 9 and 9 minus x. When you see something like this, they differ by negative 1. So all you need to do is factor out a negative 1 from any one of those two factors. So let's take it out from the top. If I take negative 1 from negative 9, the negative 9 changes to positive 9. And if I take out a negative 1 from positive x, the positive x becomes negative x. So now these two appear identical. Now, the only thing that we can do at this point 
is cancel the 9 minus x factor. 9 minus x divided by itself is just 1. And we have a negative 1 in front. So the final answer for this problem is going to be negative 1, or we could just leave a negative sign outside of the parentheses. So negative times 3 plus the square root of x, all divided by the square root of 7 plus x minus 4. which looks very similar to our original problem, but that's our answer.